now, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally sitting down here with you to review my brand new planner. This planner is by a company called Whistle and & Birch and I've been looking for a replacement for my Erin Condren planner and I still am going to continue looking and experimenting with different planners but I think for now, especially for 2020, I think I'm going to settle for this one because it's pretty much ticked all the boxes I needed. There are a couple of things that I wish would be different, which is exactly why I'm going to film this video. I want to go through all the pros and cons. I want to do a little bit of a flip through, but so far I really am enjoying it. One thing I wanted to call out that I really love about this company is that they are based in Melbourne, Australia. So if you are a fellow Australian watching my channel, then that's a big pro. Oh, and a side note, which I thought was kind of cool, is that the owner of Whistle & Birch, I don't think she does this full time. I think she works in the medical field or something medical related full time, which is just so cool. Like I can relate to that because that's basically me. I have a day job and then I do all of this in the evening. So I have a lot of respect for people who have kind of an evening side hustle. But anyways, let's get right into the flip through. I've blabbered on enough. So you'll notice that there's kind of a like a cloudy plastic cover on the front and then I love this particular cover there are I think I saw like 20 or 30 different covers you can choose from so there's a lot of options and I think there's also different types of weekly spreads you can customize the planners in that right now I've got like a monthly view and then the weekly views but you can also add like a public holiday view um, like because all of these planners I think are made to order so you can add different inserts into it to add more functional features that are right for you. I think the most important thing go to the website which is on Etsy and have a look but it's a really a la carte sort of system so you can totally customize the planner from the start. I have not put my name down. That's something I always forget to do. I kind of just jump straight into planning so I will have to do that but I kind of like this autumnal feel. It is very cute. And yeah, I'm like pretty notorious for not filling out any of these sections of most planners. Pretty much all planners I have, I don't fill these sections out, even though I look back and I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I did. But I'm really just more about the weekly spread and the monthly spread, so you'll see. So then we have a year's view, 2020. And then we get into the month. So this is starting in July. I love these, I love things with quotes on them. They're just really calming to read. And this is your monthly dashboard, which again, I have not filled out. And then we jump into the monthly view. So I've always used my monthly view for planning out any videos and social media. So different colors are for different brands. I think I've been through this before, so I don't want to repeat myself too much, but the light green is for a beautiful fable. You've got this purple here, which is for my vlog channel. So you can see I've done a lot of work for my planner channel. And actually I do need to update. This is pretty out of date now. I think by the time this video comes out, it will be almost I think it'll be August by the time this video comes out. So all of this will have been filmed um, and done. And actually most of this is already done. I just need to go and fill it out again. But that's what I use my monthly view for. And one thing I really noticed quite quickly about this, especially after using the life plan for so long, is that the paper is quite a bit thinner. It isn't as thick as the Erin Condren life planner, but it is quite typical of most planners. If I think about say the passion planner, um, not the happy planner. I think the happy planner is a little bit thicker as well. But yeah, similar to the passion planner, that thickness is around there. So you can kind of see, I don't know if it's visible, but you can kind of see a little bit of shadow through from the spread that I'm about to show you here. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see. I think it's coming up on camera pretty okay. So there is a little bit of that. And the pen that I've been typically using is my uh, Pentel Energel in 0.5. So it is a gel pen, so it does... It is a little inkier. If you use a ballpoint, I'm sure it's not the case, but I'm pretty sure if you use a Sharpie, it would go right through. So that's worth keeping in mind. So this is the first spread I started off with. It just felt really appropriate. A fresh start. It did feel like a fresh start. And as you can see, the layout is very similar to the Life Planner, which means all the kits that you have would fit perfectly in this planner. Very, very happy because as you guys know, before the whole Erin Condren thing happened, I went on a spree and I purchased a ton of kits and then that happened and I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? I ordered so many kits. So I'm really glad I found a planner that all those stickers and kits fit very well. So these are spreads that I've done, but let's flip to one where I haven't actually put anything in so you can see what it looks like without stickers. So this is a monthly view August, with no stickers in it. 
and then this is a weekly view with no stickers in it. There's a few things here that instantly off the back I was like yay and nay. So let's just focus on the things that I really like first. Um, I love that everything is a lighter grey. Nothing is like black ink so everything's light which means that when you put stickers on it for the most part, especially if the stickers are on a thicker side, you won't even see it, which means the spread is actually really customizable. So for example, down here, you can see all these check boxes. For a lot of us who use the sticker kits, we'd be putting our washi strips down here. And typically the washi strips are not this tall. They're like maybe about halfway or so, which means that you do have a little bit of these checkbox peeking through. However, because it's so light, I haven't really found it to be much of an issue. So let me show you an example. So here, the washi strips um, this kit is from the Coffee Monster Co. And you can see that the strips come up to here. And so you do see the check boxes, but from a distance, they're hardly noticeable because they're so light. I guess it comes down to personal preference. I know some people might find that irritating and you could white it out if you want to, but I just felt like if I whited it out, it would be more distracting than just writing over it. But I feel quite comfortable just writing right over it because like even from this view, I mean, when I'm looking at the viewfinder, I can't even see it. And I don't really notice it anymore. I think when I first started using the planner, especially this spread, I was very critical about all these little bits and pieces. But now I've used, I have filled out most of July, as you can see. Um, I've done quite a few spreads now. I don't even notice it anymore and I'm quite fine about that. So I really like that because they've made it such a light gray, it's very easy to customize how you want. One of the things that I don't really like is this thing at the top, important next week, weekly goal. It's a little distracting. So for some spreads, you can see I put a bit of washi tape on the top just to kind of take away from the distraction. Um, but then I've tried spreads here. Let's see, this one here, which I haven't filled out yet, um, where I didn't bother just to see what it would look like. And it's not the worst. Like I've just put my weather stickers here. I could cover it, cover it up with white out, but let me show you here. If you do use white out, it could stand out a little bit. So you can see a little white out there, a little strip. Um, and so if I did end up whiting it out, I don't know if it would be more distracting. Like the whole vibe that I'm trying to go for is to try and make everything feel as cohesive and calm as possible and not have it look too distracting. So I don't know. Personally, I think I would probably just put washi tape at the top and I'm going to do that going forward. I just wanted to make an exception for this spread so I could show you guys what it looks like if you don't. But the reason why I have that whiteout strip there, just to show you the other thing, is that there's this leaf that branch that kind of stretches quite far. And so if you put a title sticker here, you still got a little bit coming through, which is why I ended up whiting out. I wish this was a little bit more in line with this so that if I put stickers down, it's just white and I don't have to see this little gray line coming out. But I mean, we're really like, we're really nitpicking here. I don't think it's a big deal. But I also know that there's a lot of people who are really particular about things being absolutely the way they want it. So I do just want to call everything out. Okay, so let me just finish the flip through because I do have a list of pros and cons that I wanted to go through. But I wanted to kind of make it a little more succinct so that if you're interested in it, uh, and I'll link it down below, that you can just jump straight to the pros and cons. So those are all the months. And then it finishes in June. Like I said, if I want to keep using this for 2021 i'm going to finish in december and then buy a new one for just 2021 so that it can have complete years 2020 is just going to be a bit of a strange year but that's okay it's already a very strange year so back here they've got perpetual oh that's the other thing so these are all the monthly tabs i don't mind the colors but i kind of wish you could offer a gray version because i feel like the colors really stand out when i'm looking at my spread so if I, for example, like this is fine because this spread is very colorful, but uh, this spread is okay too. But see this spread, it's very pink and calm. By the way, this kit is from Sadie Stickers. The purple and all these kind of clash with it, whereas if it was a gray tab, it would just feel more cohesive. And it just makes it more flexible for any sort of style I'm going for. The colors just, yeah, I find it like it really clashes. But if you're using, yeah, for this spread it doesn't look as good but for this spread it's fine because the spread is already really loud so it's, a, it's another small thing so after you've gone through all the months you've got um second uh you've got an area for perpetual which i think are just more long-term stuff i don't know i haven't really been through this section perpetual 
Uh, I think it's just the, this is July 2021, so it's a little bit of leftover extras if you want. And then at the back of every month, they do have notes. And then at the back of the whole planner, there's a big notes section here as well. And it's, it's mostly just lined notes. I think grid paper would be really nice, but I'm actually pretty happy with lined notes as well. I have no issue with that. And then what I really like is that they have this cardboard pocket here. So I've got a couple stickers in here, but it's two-sided, so it's another pocket here. And they've got two clear pockets here, which are all attached. And so the opening is just at the top. And this has been perfect for storing kits because sometimes if I'm working like on this week, I'll have this week's kit here, but I may have already put down the stickers for next week and I can put that kit here. And then any loose stickers like weather stickers, which I use every single week, I can put here. So I actually never even thought that I would need this system, but I really like this system. I like having all these additional pockets for um, my storage. And then that's the end of the planner. All right. So what I thought I would do, let's go through all the pros and all the cons together. Oh, whoops, I've got two. So the back also has the clear plastic. I was like, why is it so thick? Okay, so let's just open up to say a weekly view or a monthly view or something. By the way, monthly view, I don't know if you noticed, the weekend are bolded. Not that it matters to me, but it's worth just calling out. Okay, so let's go through all the pros first, and then let's go through all the cons. So for me, pros, I love the design. It suits all the sticker kits that I have, and even the sticker kits that I personally make. The paper, whilst I did mention it is on the thinner side, which, you know, could go either way. Some people like it, some people hate it. I don't really care too much. It is very smooth. Um, and I will say that ballpoint pens, gel pens, um, uh, Sharpie permanent markers, everything works really well here. And I haven't really had an issue with, um, you know, sometimes when you use gel pens, you have to give the ink time to dry. I haven't had to wait too long, just stand an amount of time and I don't really get too much imprint. So I think it's good for that. But yeah, obviously the thinness means that certain types of inkier pens, like fountain pens, you can see through pretty well. Actually, I could probably do a test for pens at the end of this video. Um, as I mentioned, the light gray is really good, easy to ignore, but also really good as a guide so that you can place your stickers down sequentially. I love that the planner itself is pretty simple, so it's not too convoluted with lots of different things. I know that, say, the Passion Planner, for example, and there's other planners around goal setting, perfect for people who need that structure, but I like that this doesn't have too much structure because I love doing my own thing. So what I really love about this particular brand is how customizable it is. So you don't need to go for just this weekly view. They also do daily versions. You can do add-ons. So there's options to say add timetables if you are in school, you can do horizontal, you could add dot grid note paper instead. Um, I love the option that there was a public holiday tracker. So in Australia, we have obviously very different public holidays to the rest of the world. So you could add that in. There's like monthly expense tracking, custom add-ons, um, assessment records, baby records, if you want to use it as a parenting planner, grid as well. So there's like a whole range of stuff that you can add to the planner and a lot of other more mainstream planners. You kind of get what you see. You can't change too much of it, but I love that you can change this. Obviously, it means that there may be a little bit of extra wait time, but I think I only waited like a week and a half, maybe two weeks at most for this planner. It really wasn't long at all and totally worth the wait. And yeah, so let's get into a few of the issues that I had with it. One thing that I didn't like is that, do you notice that if you have a few pages and you try to quickly close the planner, it's doing this thing where it bends. Like it doesn't sit, it doesn't go down like straight away. And I don't know whether it's because these holes are a little bit small, so it doesn't have that flexibility. I think in a lot of other planners like the Life Planner, these holes are a little bit bigger so the pages can flip much easier. So internally it's okay, although you can see it's kind of like, bulging a little and, and it only takes a couple seconds to just push it down so it's not a big deal but it does it's something you notice especially when you're really used to other planners the other thing I really wish it had I went through the store I couldn't find anything I wish it had a removable bookmark because 
it's really annoying to try and find which week I was planning on. I have to actually manually flip through. I guess I could just put down a paper clip or something, so it's not a big deal. Always a way around it. But I just love in the Life Planner that there was this removable ruler that I could just pull out and put into the most active week, and it was a very solid ruler. It's probably one of the things I really loved about the Life Planner. So that would be something I wish that they would introduce. I don't know if they ever will, um, but I would really love to see one. That would be amazing. And yeah, they don't have anything in the shop. I thought maybe it was an add-on. I went back through to see if I could find one. I couldn't find one. I don't know if it's just sold out or I couldn't see it, but yeah, that was one of the things that I wish they had. Um, with the paper itself, so I've noticed that in the Life Planner, and I think in some of the Midori planners that I've used, you can actually put stickers down as you're putting your spread together. When you put a sticker down, if you've made a mistake, you can pretty easily peel it up if you peel it up in the next few seconds and then put it back down again. This particular planner is pretty unforgiving when it comes to stickers. So you can still do it, but you do kind of run the risk of ripping stickers as well. And um, it's pretty much impossible to take a sticker up, especially if you have like standard glossy or matte stickers. I think if you have the, um, what is it? Like there's the weatherproof matte stickers. So this particular one, um, it's got kind of a plasticky feel to it. These ones you can probably still peel up, but go really slow. If you go slow, you won't rip the paper, but if it's any of these other stickers that are just like matte paper, these will rip the planner. I think I ripped it a few times because I'm not perfect, so I always put them in the wrong spot as I'm planning, and then when I tried to pull it up, I noticed I was ripping the paper as well. So that's something to keep in mind. I would just be extra careful when you're putting your stickers down. And I think that's pretty much it. Otherwise, besides a few bits and pieces that I mentioned before, I really like this planner. So let's go over to the pen section so I can show you what the pens are like. Okay, so as you guys can see here, I've got four different types of pens. I don't think I have many more pens that I can really test, so this is pretty much it. Um, actually, I've got one highlighter here. Let's just go with the highlighter as well. So I've got a ballpoint pen, a gel pen, a permanent pen, fountain pen, and then I put down a highlighter. So that's what it looks like on this paper. And then when you flip over, that's what you're going to see on the other side. So yeah, the permanent marker comes right through. Definitely wouldn't recommend it. You see a little shadow through with the gel pen, but I'm actually kind of impressed with the fountain pen. I was already saying before, I think it's going to come right through earlier, but now that I'm seeing it, it does come through. A little more than the gel pen. I don't know if it's evident in the video, but just just a little bit more. And then you can see a little bit of the highlighter as well. And yeah, you can't see the ballpoint pen. So yeah, so that's how pens react on this paper. I think that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll have all the relevant links in the description box. And yeah, hope you found the video interesting. Thank you so much for watching. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to you, internet.